It seems that the biggest problem the UDA government has, Kenya Kwanza government, is that they are unable, they are finding it very difficult to move from campaign mode into governing mode. The best recent example of that is when Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa told a radio station that Kenya is so broke, there are no funds, and it is so serious that there isn't enough foreign currency at the central bank to enable the country to import petrol. Yeah, something very basic in the economy. Only for the governor of the central bank to shoot back and tell him, Hey, you don't know what you're talking about, Wanarigiji, because oil importation in Kenya is liberalized. It's done by private entities. And where do these private entities go for foreign exchange? They go to commercial banks. Okay? Bwana Patrick Njoroge, the CBK governor, added that indeed the country has adequate foreign exchange reserves. Bwana Njoroge did not say it in as many words, but what he was really saying was, Bwana Rigiji, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're telling Kenyans lies. That's really what it is. Now, this is getting very dangerous. Because when you're the deputy president of a country, what you say is taken very seriously by donors, by the international community, by the public at large. This is not the campaign trail where you wake up in the morning and you think up something as you're drinking your porridge or taking your tea. And then you go out there and you say it, Unaropokwa. No. You're in government. You're the deputy president. It is very important that you know exactly what you're talking about. And when you're not sure, better to remain mum. Yeah, just keep quiet. Don't comment about that issue. Now, I happen to know where Banarigadi Gashago is coming from. You see, in the 80s, before the economy was liberalized, all foreign currency was supplied by the Central Bank of Kenya. Yeah, there was nowhere else you would get foreign currency. Well, almost nowhere else, because of course there was a black market, yeah, illegal, where you could obtain forex, yeah, limited amounts. But the main supplier, and legally, the only supplier, was the Central Bank of Kenya. And indeed, there was a time in the 80s when the Kanu government ran down the economy so seriously that we did not have adequate foreign exchange reserves. Now, Rigadi Gashago at that time was a grown man. Indeed, he was a DO, harassing opposition figures all over the country, doing some dodgy, dodgy things yeah, as a DO. So he saw this. And it's stuck in his mind. And it seems he has not realized that the economy was liberalized a long time ago. Things changed. It would seem that our deputy president is stuck in the 80s. Oh boy. Folks, we have a problem here. A very serious one. You see, the current government is very, very busy yeah, criticizing the previous administration. But then how will that help Kenyans? How? Because whatever the previous administration did, it's not important now. What is important is to solve the very urgent problems on the table. Yeah, because Kenyans are suffering. Bottom line, this government needs to realize that campaigns are over. Can I repeat that? Please, Kenya Kwanza government, campaigns are over. Now it is time for you to govern. Yeah? And transform the country as you promised. You know, 
what is being done by bigwigs within the government will never work. In fact, it will work against them. It is like a man who gets a new wife. And because we were Kosana with the previous wife, yeah, they had a bitter misunderstanding. When he gets his brand new wife, he's always busy complaining about the past. His new wife asks, what is wrong with these curtains in the house? They are torn. And he responds, it is that woman who used to be here. She really just used to mess up everything. And of course that is not factual. His wife was not working. She was a housewife. Yeah. And depended on him to generate the finances, the money, to buy new curtains or to repair old ones. But this man is so busy blaming his ex-wife. Yeah. There's no sugar in the house. Oh, it is the ex-wife. She was poor at budgeting. And then, Ata Komaneno Akitanda, when he fails to perform his duties as a husband, oh, it is my ex-wife. Sijuali nifanya nini? Sijuali niroga? Sijuali nifanya nini? I am telling you, there are not many wives who can persevere a situation like that. Yeah? Because this man should just stop complaining and move on. It is not a good idea yeah, to bring in the bitterness he had with his ex-wife into this new marriage. And that's exactly what the current government is doing. They can talk about nothing else. Oh, Uru Kenyatta this, oh, Uru Kenyatta that, oh, the handshake this, oh, that, oh, boy. All the coffers were empty, there's no money at treasury. This guy stole everything. The handshake stole everything. Uru Kenyatta stole everything. All the Kenyatta family, this, all the dynasties. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Stop! Please stop. Wake up and start governing. Aye? You know, it is very easy when you're in a powerful position to make yourself a laughing stock. Let me give you a recent example. The Supreme Court, in passing its judgment over the presidential petition yeah, lodged by Azimio, used some certain words that should never be used in a courtroom, especially when somebody is passing judgment. But words were used carelessly. And what has happened? Words like hot air have become national catchphrases for comedy, wild goose chase, etc., etc. And therefore it is very easy for somebody who is in a very powerful position, like a deputy president, to become a clown, a laughing stock, yeah, where people use that person, that character, for comedy. Yeah, and meanwhile, the people of Kenya suffer. Nothing happens. It is just talk, 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 all the previous government. Eh? <laughs> I think we're in very serious trouble. Yeah? And let's not even talk about what those Mzungus out there looking at us are thinking. <laughs> They're wondering, what's wrong with these Kenyans? Who did these Kenyans elect? Does this guy know anything? Those are the comments they're making. Because to start with already, they don't like us. They have a low opinion about us. So we're just fueling yeah, those wrong thoughts about what Africans are all about. And therefore what appears to be a small matter ends up affecting many people, even beyond Kenya. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.